<laughs> yeah. Have you ever wondered how strong, fierce women deal with their dark desires? If so, look no further than Carissa Knight's uh, novels, The Client and The Contract, which we'll be discussing today. Welcome to Blackbird Writers Presents Author Interviews, and welcome to you, Carissa. Hi, thanks so much for having me, Sharon. Thank you for being here. This is, this is an exciting series and a little bit uh, off piste from what we normally do. Um, but I do want to just dive right in and talk about cliff diving. Um, so uh, it's also referred to as tombstoning, and it's central to Mina's personality. But before we get to her, I kind of want to focus on you a little. Do you swim or dive or do any of these uh, things? Um, I used to swim a lot. I mean, we spent summers at a lake house, so I learned to swim really young, you know, and I love the water and um, there was years where I used to go to the pool and do laps and stuff like that. I don't anymore. And, um, and no, I'm not a tombstoner. <laughs> <laughs> um, but your social media lately has just been absolutely alive with all these gorgeous photos of different places. People do go tombstoning. Mm -hmm. Have you been fortunate enough to visit any of those places? Not yet. Unfortunately, pandemic. And I'm, I'm making a list. I'm not going to jump off anything, but I am making a list. I'm like, that's beautiful. And that's beautiful. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I mean, it has been so fun just researching these places. Um, I don't think it would be as easy to find the places that Mina finds to go and dive from um, because there's a lot more involved in that and we can discuss that later. But but boy, yes, I would love to go to Dubrovnik and to Croatia and Greece and um, Acapulco. Um, where else? Oh my gosh, Arizona. Vermont. Vermont. <laughs> yeah. Champlain. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Um, so romantic suspense is a growing subgenre of romance. Can you explain to our mostly mystery and thriller audience uh, what romantic, it's harder to say than you might think, romantic <laughs> suspense encompasses? Yeah, certainly. Um, so romantic suspense um, obviously has the romance element, but it's not just stri strictly the story about the couple. Um, it always has um, some kind of suspenseful element like a dead body or a crime that needs to be solved. Um, you think about the Sandra Brown books, um, which there are so many of, or um, Nora Roberts also writes um, romantic suspense. And, and sometimes in the story, the, the romance might not even be the primary focus, but for the writer, um, it's it's like trying to weave two different stories together because you have the, the couple's arc and, and we always want them to be together at the end. And we also have the, the suspense arc and we want that crime to be solved. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And they are both just like building conflict on conflict on conflict. So, right. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's an exciting genre to read. Um, so going, going back a little bit to tombstoning, tell us why it's called that and why it's important to Mina, your main character. Oh, okay. Um, first of all, tombstoning is something that I don't recommend anyone try. Um, <laughs> it is actually, um, it's called tombstoning because um, you jump from very, very high cliffs into deep water, the keyword being deep. Um, the water needs to be clear of any um, objects like rocks or coral or anything that could be, you know, interfering with your entry point. And the other reason why it's called tombstoning is because you hit the water like a rock would hit the surface of the water and just sink. So, um, Tombstoning can also be used to refer to the number of people that have died trying it. So it is not a safe sport. It's very, very dangerous. <laughs> and, and this is why Mina loves it. Um, she was a diver in college. She got her scholarship to Northwestern University in Chicago, diving for the team. 
And um, so she was very, very good at it. Um, and, and she found that she could get more out of it by, you know, diving from cliffs. And, you know, there's a lot of research that would have to go into that, you know, finding the, the place in the water where there is no um, debris or there are no rocks jutting out. Um, you need a, a very clear entry place because you're going to go deep. Um, but she she loves that and and she even she does her her tombstoning trips secretly um, so she doesn't even tell anyone that she's going on these journeys and she'll she'll dive in the middle of the night um, and for her it's um, it's kind of punishing she's not really happy about her career of choice um, it didn't evolve the way she wanted it to. She is a criminal defense lawyer, and she has helped to acquit many evil men and criminals who have done horrible things, um, primarily to women. Um, and she she gets paid a whole lot of money for what she does, but in the end, she doesn't feel very good about herself or the work. So, so she needs that freeing aspect of just sailing through yeah the air yeah and and I love writing complex characters like that I mean um so I, the, I discovered that the tombstoning abs, aspect early on when I was writing these books as drafts um and I had a beta reader who who said you know she needs um to be like a risk taker or, um, you know, someone who is willing to, uh, I mean, not do self-harm. That's not what I'm trying to say, but, but someone who lives dangerously. Yeah. definitely. And yeah. So I added that to her list of character traits. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, the series is subtitled Mina's Choice. So tell us about that choice and the psychology behind it and why it is not only important to the story, but also important ultimately to us, your readers. Um, so Mina dives into a relationship with her client in book one. And he has he is a self-proclaimed dominant in the bedroom. And it was in the first book, it's something that she really wanted to try. She wanted to be punished at some level. Um, so she gets into this relationship with him and, and the title Mina's Choice um, was chosen actually very carefully because it is her choice. It is not like a lot of books that you might read about um, dominant billionaires or whatever. There's a whole slew of books like that out there. Yeah. Um, but they they usually prey on the women who they want, and mm -hmm. um, you know. And so at some level, I feel like there's some coercion going on, and and this and that. I didn't want my character like that at all. I wanted my character to be a strong woman who, who has made this choice on her own. Yeah. And that comes across just, just beautifully. She, she never feels like the victim in anything. Right. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's a, it's a, for me, it's, it's, it's the reason why I could keep reading them. Um, I, I, if, if I come across of anybody who is being victimized, I'm like, nope, I'm not going to read that. But, right. but this, is, this is her choice and this is what she wants and it might not be my choice, but. It's <laughs> right. <laughs> it might not be a lot of people's choices and I get that too. Um, mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, sometimes you just have to write what you have to write. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, so in The Client... Um, Jonathan's true character, uh, and, and that's, that's, that's her, her love interest, boyfriend, the love interest is a much better way of saying that, um, Jonathan's true character is essentially hidden, um, in book one, but in book two, an old frimony, uh, threatens him, um, revealing not only his past, but his true nature. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about Jonathan, who is also central as the dominant to this whole relationship. 
Um, so Jonathan is a bazillionaire. Um, he is the CEO for a company that started some medical software and that company um, like hit it big, especially at the beginning of the pandemic. And this is like, it's something I just mentioned early on in the story because it, you know, it helped his company grow. So um, he, you know, has a lot of money and a lot of power, um, but he also has a past, which we come to learn about in the second book and the contract. Um, and his frenemy, Janko Vorobiev, is somebody hey, that, hey. yeah, he he met through business ties in um, in Central and and uh, um, Western Europe and. Croatia and Dubrovnik and Austria and um and Janko holds a grudge so he um he feels like slighted by Jonathan and now he wants money so he threatens Jonathan for money and um and threatens that if he doesn't get this money at the end of the week he's going to take Mina. And he realizes it's pretty easy for him to see that Jonathan is completely smitten by Mina. Mina yeah. doesn't realize this. In <laughs> fact, she doesn't even realize that she's in love for quite some time. She has to come around to it in this book. Yeah. Some, some, sometimes Mina needs a, needs a good, you know, slap across the face to get her to pay attention. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, so the suspense factor in the contract book to Mina's choice um, is it, it, it just, it, it escalates even from what is in book one. Um, and she's in danger, her loved ones are in danger. It, it just, it, it kind of feels like you're on the edge of the seat with the danger, like the whole book, um, which is really It's a thriller, it's a read. thriller. And <laughs> Um, so I wanted to know what your inspiration for this uh, Jenko and the Russian mob in Chicago and all of that is. So can you tell me a little bit about that? Um, so, I mean, I'm kind of a pantser. Um, I know my characters inside and out. Um, and I knew about um, where Mina and Jonathan met like a year before she hired him as a client. Mm -hmm. um, but it was a brief meeting at a restaurant in Dubrovnik and, um, and Jonathan and Janko sent a bottle of champagne to her table. Um, so, you know, as I'm writing, I'm, I'm, I'm also listening to my characters and they, they, they tell me their secrets. So they, they sort of inform me as I go, here's what happened and here's what I did. And, um, and, and you'll, you get to understand a lot more of that in this book. Um, Jonathan explains his past to Mina. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it changes the nature of, of their relationship and, um, and it, it makes her care for him more, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, so we can't really talk about these books without talking about the uh, steamy factor, especially as my last five interviews have been with cozy authors. So um, hot or uh, extra steamy, um, Pinky. erotic, uh, all of that. So um, we have Mina's dark desires and then this really complex mystery uh, that involves you know, the medical industry and the Russian mafia and, and things happening in Chicago and all of that. And um, I was just, especially as a panster, how do you balance that when you're writing? And does one side, the erotica ever overwhelm the mystery or vice versa? Just, how yeah, do you keep certainly, that? you know, um, I have a, a, a very good relationship with my developmental editor. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, she will catch me on areas like that. You know, writing is not a perfect um, hit. I mean, you don't always um, know this. I mean, you know the story and you know, you know what you want to say. But um, as an author, you don't always like hit the mark with your um, first draft. 
Right. So I'm, I feel very lucky, lucky to have a lot of input from, um, from readers and from my editor and, um, and, you know, and they'll call me right out and say, nah, and enough sex scenes. That's enough now. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. But, you know, you, you get into a rhythm when you're writing a certain genre and you sort of begin to know what, you know, what things need to happen and when and and how to build the suspense and and how to keep the, the relationship stringing along. Um, and, you know, where is it appropriate to have your sex scenes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and those developmental editors, I just, just a little insight for the audience out there who aren't writers. Um, when, you, when you send your baby off to an editor, it's terrifying. But what's more terrifying is getting those edits back. And, and, yeah. just, <laughs> and the 12 like, pages of notes. It's like, <laughs> okay, I got those. I'm going to wait a day, maybe two. And get in the right mind space before I open those. Because, right. Yeah. Sometimes there's a comment on just every line. <laughs> right. And I mean, and sometimes they say things that just make you want to cry. You right. know, <laughs> wait, yeah. what? You didn't like that? <laughs> I, I really worked hard on that. <laughs> yeah. No, delete the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> just no. <laughs> I actually had an editor do that once, just three pages. No. Yeah. Line through the whole thing. No. Line through the whole thing. No. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And you cry a little and you just do it. And then you get back to it because, yeah. you know, we got to write. Right. <laughs> All right. So the contract is out this month. What is the release date? The release, it releases on August 16th. Tuesday, um, August 16th. Absolutely recommend that you read the client first, but you don't have to. Yeah, I think the, 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 the mysteries and the relationship are both self-contained, but definitely the relationship is, is, is building from one place into another place in the second novel. So yeah, that's, that's what I did. I read both of them back to back. Um, so I know you're planning a third in the Mina's Choice series. Uh, so what can we expect next from Mina and from Carissa? Well, Jonathan is going to Greece because he needs to find someone. I don't want to give anything away. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and he kind of disappears. So, um, you know, Mina has to go after him. She's realized how in love she is and she wants to be with him. So um, I'm having a lot of fun uh, exploring the Grecian islands these days, virtually. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. that sounds really exciting. Um, and, and yeah, I, I finished this one before the release date. So now I'm like, well, when's the next one going <laughs> to, which is probably the at when least you read a, a book year. in two days and it takes a year to write. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's all the time we have for today. Thank you, everybody, for stopping by Blackbird Writers Presents Author Interviews. Thanks. And can I just say one more thing? Sure, um, of course. Carissa Knight is a pseudonym. And uh, you can sign up for Carissa's newsletter at tracysphillips.com. Tracysphillips.com. And also read Tracy S. Phillips books. So there. Yes, please. <laughs> Thank All you. right. Thank you very much. All right.